Hello everyone, thank you very much for tuning in for another episode here of the Aquarium Project. I really appreciate the support that we've been getting recently, so thank you all very much. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and all that good stuff that really helps the channel out. Um, tell your friends, tell your neighbours, tell your mum, tell anyone, um, you know, that would be much appreciated. But yeah, other than that, we'll get right into today's episode. So today's episode i thought we'll take a look through and a look around our cherry barb tank because we haven't had a much of a look at that recently so i thought we'll do a bit of a deep dive on all the equipment plants stocking all that kind of thing so yeah so this is the tank here it is very roughly a 45 centimeter cube and as you can see in it we've got just a bunch of cherry barbs basically there is uh maybe half of them or so Maybe a little bit more would be the long fin variety and then the rest of the short fin variety. And yeah, there's also some Sturby Cories and Albino Cories in here. Now, this tank is one of my favorites, um, pretty much my favorite planted tank, I'd have to say. Um, but just look how beautiful they are. We sell tons of cherry barbs because like people see this and they're like, that's awesome. Those are the coolest fish in the world. And I mean, are they wrong? I'd say no. Um, so we've got obviously the males will be like these ones here, which is like super super dark like full deep red So that's the males there and then the females will be like this one here. That's got like the white bellies um, That's the easiest way to tell the difference the good thing about the cherry barbs is it's very easy to tell males and females apart If you're wanting to breed them or that I know a lot of people probably will mention it, but this one here has this big growth on his tail um I don't know what it is it's like some sort of cancer or something he's had it for like probably getting close to a year now i'd say and nothing bad has happened he's just um got a little growth there so yeah just so you guys know but yeah other than that we've got on the right this is the limnophila sesiflora or the ambulia i absolutely love this plant we are able to grow enough to supply our shop in here and i just love the way it looks basically in the middle slash towards the back we've got the rotala macrandra um that's a really beautiful deep red kind of it looks like rose petals i reckon um so that's an awesome plant and then on the front left we've got the rotala rotundifolia another really good really easy plant this whole tank is supposed to be easy fish easy plants so yeah the other thing is we've got also uh, i don't know if we can really see it that well but towards the back we've got the um what is that plant called? Aponogetans undulatus. Um, it always gets covered in algae, but it is growing well. Uh, it's kind of always there. So that's one it grows like a weed, but it's good fun. We've also got this here, which is just one of the um, golden pothos growing out the top. Because basically, why not? Um, you can never have enough, basically. So yeah, this one here is the bottom of the Aponogetans, um, just so you know. But yeah. That's basically it for the actual stocking in there, I believe. Um, I would show the quarries, but they're quite shy. Um, and there's not a ton of them. Like, there might be only five of each or something like that. So, yeah, we will throw some food in in a second. Hopefully, they'll come out. In terms of the hardware, it's running a this light here, which is a weak Aqua Z200 Pro, I think. Um, I'm not 100% sure they're getting sold in New Zealand still, but as you can see, the, the lights are absolutely beautiful. Um, and the plants really seem to love it. The only thing is definitely if you're wanting to buy one um, Definitely don't buy a pro um, just buy the normal one The pro basically is the one that's Bluetooth controlled with the app, but the app is terrible and never works um, It'd be so much easier just to have the bottom one. So If you're looking at it buy the bottom one that that's cam's top tip for the day um, Save yourself some money and get a more easy to use light. So it's a win-win situation um, but yeah, you can see like how beautiful this Rotala Rotundifolia is there. Absolutely love it. Um, in terms of the filt filtration, that's it down there. Um, it is a bit hard to tell, but it's an Owaza um, Filto Smart 200, I believe it is. Yeah, I think it's 200. And it's also running the inline heater. Um, that's a filter as well. Like, we used to sell Owaza quite a while ago. Again, I probably wouldn't um, do it again. They're fine filters, but they're expensive. And in my opinion, the extra price isn't worth it. Like you can get an Eheim filter, Eheim, um, what are they called? Eheim Classic filter for cheaper. And I think they'll be much better units. Um, obviously, if you're in like the UK or something, I don't 
know what the pricing is. I think that as far as I'm aware, the pricing is much better. It's the freight to get them to New Zealand that causes the problems, but worth looking at, but I probably wouldn't use the Nawaza filter again, to be perfectly honest. Um, but it is quite good having the um, inline heater. Obviously in this tank, I probably wouldn't care too much because I'll just, I'd just tuck it behind some plants, but it is good to have the inline heater. It's, you know, stranger things have, have happened. Um, I've also got these, I don't know what you call these, like stainless lily pipes. Um, it's fine, it grows a lot of algae. This tank does grow a lot of algae, so that's not ideal, but I also don't put that much effort into trying to get on top of it. So I do quite actually like the look and I don't mind, everything seems happy enough. Um, but yeah, you can see a little bit of algae growing on the inlet. It does have one of these, a skimmer. Um, I think a skimmer is really useful, particularly for the start in a uh, planted tank, but it's honestly not one I probably, I got given this by a supplier, I believe. So that's why I'm using it, but I'm not entirely sure if I'd do this again. I, I would probably r much rather have the um, Eheim, you know, the Eheim Surface Skim 350, um, which is just like a separate unit. I think that'll be much better. Um, I do also get worried about fish getting sucked in occasionally they do which is never fun so um, oftentimes i can save them but it's it is a risk so i probably wouldn't do that again and then we just got this glass outlet again got given to me nothing fancy i'm not i'm not a big fan of it to be honest but i have it so i may as well use it um again it just seems like extra money for some of your i mean realistically who cares what the outlet looks like um we've also got i'll show you this whoops um so this tank is running a pressurized CO2 system. So this is my bottle here. And then this is one of the CO2, um, CO2 Aquarius uh, regulators, I think. I think that's just what they're called. It's a good regulator. I'm not the world's biggest expert on CO2, but it does the job. Very easy for a beginner to set up. Um, so yeah, that's that. It's, it's nothing too crazy. And then this is, uh, I think this is a Twin Star Neo Diffuser. Um, this thing is ancient now, so it does, probably need cleaning out as you can see there are some big bubbles coming out but again it's a simple system that does the job very easily so i can't complain too much um but yeah this tank that's kind of a, a brief overview of this tank i really do like it it is so i think i actually talked about it the other day um with the other tour video we did but i'm not actually the world's biggest community fish guy it's just not my thing i'm more into like my african cichlids lake tangyican cichlids um american cichlids all that kind of thing um even goldfish to an extent but this little community tank really does do it for me it's simple i'd spend like no time basically looking after it might get a water change in a trim once once a week twice a week um which is quite easy for me because i just am able to drain it straight into that sink right there so that's nice and easy but yeah this this tank is cool because it's easy and it's fun um, and you just cannot beat these cherry barbs. I absolutely am in love with them. Um, they just are fantastic fish and a real showstopper like everybody seems to love them so yeah. What I thought we'd do now is I might just set the camera up and finish off this video by chucking in some food and letting you guys watch that. So these guys get fed their Apache grub pie so whoops there you are that's what it is here. It's a little, it's basically a gel, and this one I put in a mold to make it look cooler, basically. But if we chuck that in there, you can see the fish going. Um, the cherry barbs do like it. Oh, whoops, it's not quite able to see. Um, but you can see the albino quarries and the stabi quarries. They generally wait for it to get kicked into the plants there to come eat. But as you can see, the cherry barb's gone absolutely mental. I don't actually know how many there is in this tank. There might be... 20 to 30 kind of thing um just a big group of cherry barbs is kind of all i all i wanted in here oh no this hold on there we go um i didn't want anything too crazy but yeah they do the job um uh, the quarries kind of ended up in here from various sort of sources like some i got from a, one of my customers and some were rescues and that so they're just living out here um with the cherry barbs but i, I really did did want to focus on them they just are honestly one of my favorite community fish. Like just looking at the swarm here, looking at them pick apart that rapashi is honestly fantastic. What more could you want realistically? Um, it's just a fun, beautiful tank that is not, not requiring much maintenance, but is really effective basically. 
So yeah, I'll kind of just be quiet for a bit now, I guess, and let you guys just watch them, watch them pick away. But yeah. I'd love to know what you guys think about this tank. If there's anything you'd like to, like, like if you would do differently. So for example, if you'd, you know, add some different plants or can think of better fish stocking, that would always, I'd always love to hear it. But yeah. I won't, we won't record the whole thing because uh, that'll take forever. But yeah, that'll, that'll be enough for now. A fun little feeding video at the end for you guys as a bit of a bonus. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, nothing too exciting for today. Just thought I'd run you guys through that. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.